Hey, hey, good people, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all is going well, and I hope your guitar and musical journey is going famously. Today I have another FAQ session. This is number eight of 2019, and we are in May now. 2019 is just flying by. Um, I hope you are enjoying these uh, question and answer videos where uh, you send in the questions and we share the answers. And uh, a lot, I've been getting a lot of feedback People are really enjoying these sessions and they really love um, the format because when you ask a question, a lot of people are thinking the same question and they are getting a lot out of these. So we're going to continue to do them. Please, if you haven't sent in a question yet or you have another question, send your questions to me. Um, you can either put them in the YouTube description box below or email them to me if you're more comfortable that way. Send them to me at the next level guitar at yahoo.com and if you got a second please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet that really helps us we so appreciate it that that helps us to keep bringing the content right leave a question or leave a comment below let us know how you like these videos or what lessons you'd like to see coming up or what gear you'd like to see reviewed leave a comment in that youtube description box if you like the video give it a thumbs up click the like button share it helps us so much and we so appreciate it thank you and just a quick update i've been getting some emails about my uh, original band mind cell um, we're going to be dropping our debut record very soon in fact i'm going back into the studio tomorrow i have a few more leads uh to work on the songs are sounding killer um i already posted our first single off the new record and i'll put links to that in the youtube description box but the exciting news is i posted a piece of the second release second song um, so please check that out. I'll put links to that. Go to my band Mindsell Facebook page. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description box below. If you can please just check out the video, leave a comment, let me know how you like it. Uh, I so appreciate your thoughts. And if you wouldn't mind liking that Facebook page for my band, that would really help. And I so appreciate it. Um, just check those links. I'll put them below. Thank you. First question today is from SF Kim Rush. Uh, David, I play a Strat. When I strum, my right hand hits the controls and the pickup selector changes position. I've seen Stevie Ray go crazy and all seems okay. How can I avoid hitting the controls? Thanks, Kim. Unfortunately, that's one of the complaints that uh, people have about playing Stratocaster guitars, that the controls can be in the way when you're strumming and playing the guitar. So what he's saying is as he's playing and strumming, his hand is hitting the pickup selector, or some, I've heard students, even their hands hit the knobs and they change the settings because of how they're positioned as, let's say, uh, as opposed to like on a Les Paul guitar, obviously your pickup selector switches up here, so you're not going to hit that. And the controls are back further on the back end of the guitar, so it's really, they're really not in the way. Many other guitars are kind of similar where they put the controls more toward the rear of the guitar. So there's really only two ways that you're going to avoid this, Kim. One is you can kind of rig up something, put a piece of tape or something across here so when you hit it, it doesn't move. But I really don't recommend that. I mean, you could do it, but it probably doesn't look very cool. What I recommend is you're going to have to change the position of where you're laying your hand on the strings uh, to get your arm more toward the neck of the, get more toward the headstock of the guitar. So you're probably playing in a position like this and this is where you're hitting, right, that switch. So you're gonna wanna move your hand and your arm up this way. It's the only way around it. You know, I play strats, I play lots of guitars, Paul Reed Smiths, Gibson Les Pauls, Carvins, as you know, I love them all, strats. Um, but when I play strats, I don't have that problem. And the reason is, is because my positioning for my hand is I'm kind of playing more over the first pickup, the neck pickup. So you see, this really doesn't come into play with me hitting the controls. If you're playing more over the second or between the second and the middle and the bridge pickup, yeah, you're gonna hit it. So you're gonna have to move your arm this way. Now, it's a subtle move, but it might be uncomfortable at first, but there's just no way around it. Question from Ken P who says, what would be the first pedal you'd recommend for a new guitar player? Could you show how one goes about hooking things up? Sure, Ken. Um, it's a difficult question only because there's so many great pedals out there and a lot depends on the style of music that you play, um, what sounds you wanna create, things like that. Um, a great first pedal would be, if your amp doesn't have reverb, would be to you know get a reverb pedal to add that little bit of you know ambiance, that sound to your playing and make it a little bit wetter. 
you know, really makes a big difference. If you have reverb in your amp already, then you don't need it. If you, if you have a reverb pedal, try hooking that up in the effects loop of the amp. There are so many players out there who want that, you know, really good blues or blues rock sound. So I would say a good first pedal would be to get an overdrive pedal or a tube screamer. All right, and I'll show you how you can hook that up to get a really good sound really easy. Get yourself either uh, an Ibanez TS9, probably the most famous you know, tube screamer, or a Boss Super Overdrive pedal, or the pedal that I'm gonna use here right now is the Friedman BEOD pedal. Now, a lot depends obviously as far as what's gonna sound the best. It's very subjective. It depends a lot on the guitar you're using, the pickups, your playing style, the type of amp you have, right? So these are just general. For this particular example, this will get you a really good, you know, overdriven, bluesy kind of sound. Um, so here's though the trick how you want to hook it up. You want to run your guitar from your guitar straight into the pedal. Okay, straight into the input. In this instance, I'm using this Friedman BE pedal. And then from the pedal, I go right to the input of the amp. So we're putting the pedal before the amp. That's really important because what this does is we want to smack that amp hard by running our signal into the pedal where it's going to be, you know, overdriven, it's going to be clipped or it's going to be, you know, distorted, then into the amp. So that's going to make that amp work a little harder to help produce this cool kind of overdriven sound where we don't have to crank the amp up to like an insane volume level like most of us aren't going to, you know, have in our, our bedrooms or when we're playing at home. And you want to hook this up onto the clean channel of your amp, okay? For instance, I'm running into a Fender 212 Hot Rod DeVille amp. Now that amp has distortion, it has two channels, has a clean and a dirty channel, but I don't really like the distorted channel on the Fender, most Fender amps. To me, it's just not my thing. Um, but that's a great clean channel, right? This amp has 6L6 tubes, which I love. Clean channel is awesome. And the great thing about a lot of these Fender DeVille type amps is they take pedals really well. So you want to have it hooked up uh, your pedal in front of the amp, like I just described, running into the clean channel. The other trick is setting up the pedal. On the pedal, you're going to have a knob for volume or level, right? And you're also going to have probably one for tone and then one for gain. The trick is turn the gain way down, crank it way down so it's just cracked a little bit, but the level you want way up, all right? And that's the trick to running this. Really low gain, high on the level. So here's the clean channel. Right now when I kick on the pedal, guitar players playing at first you know that's a, a really good way to go the other way you could use that pedal too is let's say you have an amp that has a decent distorted sound okay so you could hook up you have a good clean sound through the amp decent distorted sound use the tube screamer again you could use it in front of the amp but you might even want to hit that to give you a third sound let's say you have your distorted channel with a little higher gain you have your clean channel but then you have the tube screamer or overdrive pedal set up like like I just told you. So now you have three options because you could play through the clean channel. You can hit the distortion, hit, click your pedal and it gives you that really nice bluesy overdriven sound, right? And then change channels to the distorted channel. You have that sound. And then if you click on the pedal on the distorted channel, that'll maybe give you like a lead tone, right? You could add maybe a little more gain, crank the volume so your volume is a little higher. So that will cut for when you start playing your leads. So this pedal, you could use it in multiple ways with multiple channel amps, or even if you just have one channel on your amp, it'll kind of give you like two because you have that clean channel and you hit it and you have the clean but with that nice overdriven sound. So it's a great pedal to start with. I got a couple questions here about frets that are interesting, so I thought we would do both of them. First one, a YouTube question from Andrew, Highway to Hell 96792 is his YouTube name. Probably an ACDC fan. Going to go out on the limb and stay, say that. Uh, Andrew asks, Hi, David. Can you give us your thoughts on stainless steel frets? Thanks, Andrew. Sure. No problem, Andrew. Thanks for your question. Um, most guitar frets, as you probably know, are nickel, right? Um, but uh, many guitar companies as an option or when you do a refret or many guitar companies are, are also, they, they standard put in stainless steel frets. 
So what are some of the advantages? Well, the first thing is with nickel frets, uh, the big knock on them is that they wear, right? They wear over time, as well as nickel does oxidize. So you can get some corrosion between the strings and the frets. Couple of advantages of the stainless steel frets. First of all, they're more durable. They last longer and they may last a lifetime on your guitar. Uh, it's very hard surface and they remain shiny. Um, as long as you, you know, keep the maintenance up on the guitar. So what that means is that uh, some people feel they play smoother because they're shinier and sleeker, right? And uh, might be a little bit easier to bend the string on that shinier, sleeker surface of that stainless steel fret. So they have that, some say they have that silkier feel and they certainly will last longer than nickel frets. And also stainless steel is corrosion resistant, so you don't have that problem with oxidation. Play some guitars you know, with the nickel frets, play some guitars with the stainless steel frets, compare them, see how you like the feel, see how you like the tone, see if it feels different. And then a second question on frets is from Tom R, who asks, notice in your All Right Now DVD, you're playing Big Apple Fender Strat with dual humbuckers. In the close-up, those frets looked fat. I'm guessing wide bends may be a lot easier and bar chords might be a tad easier compared to frets on my 94 Made in Mexico Strat, yours looks a lot fatter. What would a refret to True Jumbo's run approximately? Rock on, brother, Tom. So he saw that I was playing in one of my DVD courses, a Fender Big Apple Strat. I don't have that guitar anymore, I would show you, but yes, it did have jumbo frets. I uh, sold that guitar some years ago. Um, it was a pretty cool guitar, Fender Strat with dual uh, two Seymour Duncan uh, Pearly Gate humbuckers uh, that came stock from Fender. It is a little different. Um, so basically he's asking about the jumbo frets and it's a little different feel than, uh, playing with, you know, like a thinner fret, like a medium fret. Uh, so you want to try both out and see what you like. Does it make string bending easier? I guess it does maybe a little bit, uh, because of the, the, the size and the tallness of the jumbo frets. Um, some people say there's a tone difference. I never really thought it was that significant but definitely a feel difference. So if you're considering it, I would consider playing some guitars with medium, playing some guitars with jumbo. Does it make playing bar chords easier? You know, minimally, I would say. Um, so, but I would say try. Try on uh, medium frets, try with some jumbo frets. And then if you wanted to get a refret, probably gonna cost you two, 300 bucks. Again, a lot of it depends on the wood of the neck. You know, if it's a really hard wood that's tough to work with, like ebony, you know, be a lot more expensive than, you know, like maple. And also is your guitar set neck, is it bolt on? Uh, there's a few variables, but probably, you know, two to 350 bucks, something like that. The big thing, like I always say, is play as many guitars you can get your hands on, right? Because that will really tune you into the type of neck the type of frets, the thickness of the neck, of the nut, you know, whether you like the fat C neck or a thin neck, you know, you want to play lots of guitars and as many as you can get your hands on. And, and, and besides the playability, you know, you want to listen for the tone, two biggest things, right? How does the guitar sound? Well, how's the tone? And what are the pickups sound like? And how does it feel? How does it feel in my hand? How does it feel against my body? Those are the you know, two important things, but play as many as you can get your hands on. If you'd like a killer reference ebook, which you will use throughout your guitar journey, I will send you my biggest rock blues soloing ebook. It has like over 29 scale diagrams, soloing strategies, key signature, major, minor key stuff. It's packed with lessons and scale diagrams. I'll send that to you free for free, as well as I'll pair it with a video lesson with simple things you could do to really dress up your playing. It's a great one-two punch, video lesson and ebook. I'll send it to you for free. Just click on that link below. Next question is from Don. Don is from Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada. He says he's just starting his guitar journey and he's purchased a secondhand electric acoustic Yamaha and a beginner cheap electric guitar. He says he can't play either yet, but he's in a market for a practice amp that would sound half decent that he could use with either guitar. What are your thoughts on what I should be looking for on a limited budget? Cheers, I think the Q&A is a great idea. Thanks for your question, Don, and thank you for your kind words. We're gonna keep the Q&As coming. I really enjoy doing these, and I'm so glad to provide information that will help students and players along their guitar journey. I have a few suggestions for you on budget practice amplifiers. The big thing is you wanna look at, obviously, is budget, so these are all fairly inexpensive. And also, you don't need, you know, a lot. You don't need a huge amp. You're talking about a small, low wattage practice amp that sounds good, that's inspiring, that you can get some inspiring tones out of in your bedroom. And the good news is, is the technology has gotten so good that you can get these small, solid state 
practice amps, low wattage with lots of features. A lot of them have tons of effects built into them like delays and reverbs and decent sounding overdrive and distortion. Um, and they sound pretty good and some even have features like a headphone jack, which is nice so you can not disturb anyone. Put the headphone jack in, plug in your headphones. Some even have like an eighth inch input so you can hook up your phone or an iPod so you can play jam tracks through it and play along. That's a cool feature. So you want to look at the features of the amp and obviously you want to look at the tone and the price. And if you're looking to save money too, you also want to look at the used market um, because usually practice amps are kept at home. They're not taken out on the road pretty much for the most part. Part. so they're usually not you know don't have a lot of wear and tear or abused in the solid state practice amps you know they last a long time they don't require maintenance so you can get a good deal on a used maybe a couple years old model as opposed to if you want to save money from buying brand new you could check out your local Craigslist and also a site like Reverb or even eBay you're not gonna find one amp that's gonna sound great for your acoustic plugged in and your electric you know because an acoustic guitar is Amplifying that is a little bit different. It's a little bit different speaker you're going to want as opposed to an electric guitar. So keep that in mind. You know, this is mainly for the electric guitar. Um, you could sound, plug in the acoustic electric, it'll sound fine. But if you're playing the acoustic electric and you're just having, you really don't necessarily need it amplified, right? Because the sound is loud enough. But if you want, you can always plug it in. But just remember, it's not going to sound as good as opposed to having a specific amp that's designed for acoustic guitars with that special PA, it's almost like a PA speaker, very flat response as opposed to something that's colored. Um, so it's a little different animal. But that's okay. We're just talking about to get a decent sound right now. A couple amps for you to check out. I made some notes here. The Orange Crush 20RT, about 189 bucks. Decent amplifier. Sounds really good. A lot of my students have uh, said a lot of nice things about that amp. Um, I think the Yamaha THR series, I've played through a bunch of their different THRs and they all sound really good and they have really good features and lots of different things that you could do with them. Um, really good sounding amp for the money. Um, they make that THR 10X, it's about $300. Um, again, you can get it cheaper use, as well as they make a little smaller one, that THR 5, check those out. Also the Roland Cubed, some of the older ones, like you would get used, packed with features and some pretty decent sounds. The Boss Katana has been getting some rave reviews. They start around $100, so you could check out those. Again, packed with features. And then the PV Viper series, uh, they make, I believe it's like the VIP one for about 150 bucks. And that Viper series also has gotten a lot of really good reviews and a lot of my students have played that amp and they're really happy with it. And if you're going to check it out used or new, remember, bring your guitar right to the store, you know what I mean? And just plug it in and play a bunch of them and see which has the features that you like best and which has the tones that you like best. Right, time to pick a winner for a Next Level Guitar t-shirt or Next Level Guitar swag. Um, and our winner this week is Ken P. Ken asked the question about what type of pedal can you recommend for a beginner guitar? Guitar player Ken thank you for your question um, you won uh, some next level guitar swag I will email you to see if you want a next level guitar t-shirt or maybe some DVDs or a site membership but uh, check your inbox and uh, stay tuned for the next FAQ session because we, we pick a winner for a next level guitar t-shirt on every one of these videos I hope you enjoyed this FAQ video um, please keep sending your questions in. I read every one of them. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. Remember, you can email them to me at the next level guitar at yahoo.com. Please leave a comment. Let us know how you like this. Let us know what lessons you'd like to see. If you like the video, click, click the like button. And remember to subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel, that really, really helps us. Please check out my band MindCell at our Facebook page. I'll put a link below because I just loaded up a new song, a uh, second one released off of our coming record, which is coming out this summer. I'm really excited about it. If you could visit the page and like it, leave a comment, that would help me out so much and I so appreciate it. And don't forget to click on that link in the YouTube description box to get your free video lesson and ebook. Thanks so much for your support over the years. I so appreciate it. Um, we're going to keep bringing the best lessons possible. Stay tuned. Lots more killer content coming. And hey, remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care and rock on.